Thank you for joining us on this Friday evening. We begin the news at 10 with decision 2018 staff shakeups and super PAC ties made for a dramatic week at Paulette Jordan's campaign headquarters with a little more than six weeks until election day. The gubernatorial candidate answered questions on talk radio about the latest headlines and her platform. Our Morgan Boynton sat in on the show and Morgan, it made for an interesting hour, didn't it? Yes, it certainly did, Brian. We were invited to record Nate Shellman's hour long segment on 670 KBOI with the Democratic candidate for governor. I tried to get a hold of Jordan's campaign manager multiple times over the last couple days, but didn't hear back and then was told this afternoon as I was trying to track Jordan down that she wasn't in town. Once they saw we were in the studio too. You guys can't film. Well, no, that's actually my choice. Just as you get in, actually, okay, just so you know, okay, it's, it's my choice. I'm allowing this. Gubernatorial candidate Paulette Jordan hesitated to come in and go on Nate Shellman's show. Democrat gubernatorial candidate Paulette Jordan joining us here in studio. Welcome in. Hi, Nate. I see you have a lot of uh, uninvited guests here that we weren't aware of, but we're, we welcome everybody. So good, good. Glad to have you. First up, the latest headlines out of Jordan HQ. Staff shakeups during a run, the campaign's ties with a super PAC. We Isn't that typical? Doesn't that happen in I many campaigns? I don't know if that happens a week before the, before the primary. It happens everywhere, Nate. Does it? Yeah. After three top staffers resigned last week, the campaign said it was a part of a planned leadership transition. I think they were misled and unfortunately that's the challenge with campaigns and we you know we weren't there to even discuss the issue but you know you have issues with campaigns that are very natural and you know we were have growing pains as mm -hmm. they say you have to remove the negative and it's it's unfortunate uh, you know we i like to say make everyone family in our campaign then on to the recent creation and ties to a super PAC jordan's campaign says it was set up so the coeur tribe of which she's a member could donate and support first nations issues have you helped any fundraising or advising for super PACs no never not for super PACs no i don't uh, have any money that's coming from any super PAC uh, via me to my campaign uh, what I have done is encourage uh, my own tribe who wants to help other campaigns of other Native women uh, and, of course, uh, bring about more support and change for the Indigenous voice, which is their right to do. Jordan says it's not her pack, but she helps influence it by her voice in the race. It's a different kind of campaign you're running. Oh, very much. Unprecedented. Okay. What, what makes it so unprecedented? As the only real Idahoan, the only real American running uh, for this position as governor of a state in our country. Uh, we're setting all kinds of uh, examples and ways to show that as an indigenous voice, you know, we are wholly connected to this land. We are connected to our people. Listener calls poured in about her platform. We have callers lined up. Your question's next. Topics ranging from growth to Prop 1. This is not about horse racing itself. It's simply about the slot machines that I find to be still against the Constitution. If people pass it, then I will support the will of the people. To education. Our education system needs to be reformed altogether. We need to pay our teachers better. We need to ensure that we're not increasing taxes at the local level. Now, all this money should come from the state general fund. From immigration to the Second Amendment. Do you want to make any any changes when it comes to Second Amendment or guns? Do you want to see anything nope. implemented or not implemented? Nope. You, anything banned, not banned? Nope. I am firmly in support. My brothers are... Uh, gun owners who uh, actually have semi-automatic assault rifles, uh, AR-15s, and I support them having that. I, no one should take that away. They're, in fact, they're veterans, so uh, they're responsible gun owners. And I, my big position is just ensuring that we have uh, comprehensive background checks. Shellman wrapping up, asking what the Democratic candidate from Plummer feels her chances are. Absolutely amazing. They're positive, strong. I mean, this is the reason why everyone's running scared, even the media, you know, you know, these lies are going to come I'm, I'm, out. I'm in and the I, media, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, we love we love everybody. Okay. But yeah, there's some folks, they, they've made some missteps, you know, and it's uh, it's unfortunate, but the truth always rises above. And I do want to point a discrepancy out. You heard Jordan is a gun owner, and she said she supports AR-15s today. But when Arjo Paris asked during KTVB's primary debate this spring if she believes the AR-15 has a place in Idaho, she said, quote, it doesn't have a place here in Idaho, but then went on to say she's not for taking guns away from responsible gun owners. Brian. Well, very interesting, and it's only going to get more interesting as we get closer to that primary coming up in November. Thank you very much, Morgan.